The Courtauld's Red Scar Works in Preston opened in 1939 to manufacture rayon for clothing and for tyre cord. At peak production it employed around 4,000 people. In November 1979 the company announced the closure of the plant with the loss of around 2,600 jobs. The complex was demolished in the early 1980s. Courtauld's helped reshape society in Preston. The British Nationality Act of 1948 meant that people from the British colonies could come to the UK without a visa. With a labour shortage at that time, many people came from Pakistan to work in northern manufacturing industries, most likely including Preston. What is certain though, is that in 1957, Courtauld's relocated some employees from Coventry, bringing the first Muslim men to settle permanently in Preston. By 1960, a third of the Red Scar workforce had been born outside the UK, in Europe, South Asia and the Caribbean. These workers brought new faiths to Preston to make it the multicultural centre it is today. An outstanding gift of chemistry, Rayon has swiftly climbed to the forefront of fashion within the space of a few short years. Today, rayon fabrics enhance luxurious creations from fashion headquarters here and abroad. Hundreds of millions of pounds of yarn are required each year to meet the ever-growing demand for rayon fabrics. Today, rayon brings new beauty and luxury within the reach of everyone. For every apparel use, in every room of the home, woven, knitted, braided, in exquisite textures, patterns, colors, Rayon fabrics brighten practically every household in the civilized world. For 40 years, from 1939 to 1979, Preston was a major centre for rayon production. Courtauld's was an Essex-based textile company which pioneered the commercial production of viscose rayon. In 1939, they opened their largest rayon factory in Preston. Cotton was the major employer in textiles in Preston until the arrival of the Cotton's plant in the late 1930s. During the 1940s, Cotton's urged the readers of British Vogue magazine to choose rayon products, and they promoted themselves as the greatest name in rayon, adapting the greatest name in cotton slogan of Preston cotton manufacturer Horrocks. In the 1950s, Courtauld's developed a new, durable, colourfast yarn and chose Preston as the place to make it. This yarn was called Duracol. The coloured pigment was added to the viscose cellulose before being spun into rayon so that it was fixed permanently inside. Duracol was used in dress and household fabrics. Most other coloured fabrics of the time were dyed so the pigment was only on the surface. This meant that their colours washed out over time. The Courtauld's Red Scar factory dominated the landscape with its two 365-foot chimneys, part of its own coal-fired power station, and its two cooling towers needed to cool the water from its energy production. These would have been major landmarks in Preston between 1939 and the demolition of the site in the early 1980s. But just where were they? This is an aerial view of the modern-day Red Scar industrial estate. Next to the M6 just north of Junction 31 at Salmsbury, and with its main entrance on Long Ridge Road as it leaves Ribbleton and crosses the M6 on the way out of Preston. In 1958, the twin chimneys and cooling towers of the Courtauld's plant were major landmarks. These old maps and photos of the Courtauld's Red Scar rayon works show that the present day site is remarkably similar in layout. The first section of motorway in England, the Preston Bypass, was built by Tarmac Construction and opened by the then Prime Minister Harold Macmillan on December 5, 1958. This is how that section of Preston Bypass looks today.
This footbridge over the M6 is a continuation of Pope Lane in Rivelton, just next to Grange Park. This area is very close to the perimeter of the old Courtauld's works on the Sarnesbury side, and the cooling towers and chimneys would have been very imposing sights from this close. That view from this footbridge in the early 1980s is now hard to imagine, as this is now a peaceful area of open grassland with walks down to the Ribble. This is the present day entrance to Red Scar Business Park, which was established in 1982, very soon after the demolition of the Courtauld's plant. This is Rich's Farm on Longridge Road, photographed in 1935. The farm was demolished in 1936 and the site became the main north entrance to the Courtauld's works and later to the Red Scar Business Park we know today. These maps show Rich's Farm, the Preston and Longridge Railway and the stretch of road from the junction of Ribbleton Avenue Gamel Lane up to Rich's Farm, which is lined, in the day, with farms and fields. Of course, long before the M6 cuts right through the middle. If you use that loop of the River Ribble as your bearing, this is how this map looks today. Complete with the Preston Bypass, the M6. Red Scar takes its name from an old Elizabethan mansion which was located in a scenic position on the hillside overlooking the River Bend. Between 1818 and 1883 it was the residence of William Asherton Cross, former Justice of the Peace for Lancashire, as these 19th century engravings show. The property was located in what are now the Gardens of Remembrance of Preston's Crematorium, which can be seen to the right hand side of this aerial photo. The house was demolished in 1939 to make way for the Courtauld's works, and a large part of the mansion's grounds became the Courtauld's plant. The site of the house itself remained undeveloped, and sadly, a beautiful mansion was lost perhaps unnecessarily. Rayon is a man-made fibre made from cellulose, which is the main constituent in all plant life. Courtauld's rayon was made by the viscose process. Wood pulp sheets are softened with chemicals and steeped and squeezed in presses to leave a soft pulp sheet. These soft sheets are passed to the floor below to be shredded into crumbs, which are aged in large containers for many hours. With the addition of more chemicals, more changes take place. These crumbs go into churns to rotate and more chemicals are added. When the crumbs finally leave the churns, they're mixed with water to produce a thick honey-like liquid called visco solution. This is the spinning solution. This solution is forced through tiny nozzles into an acid bath where it hardens to create filaments of rayon. These filaments are guided round a system of wheels to create a yarn and they end up in a large pot called a rayon cake. These rayon cakes are washed and then spun to remove moisture. The final drying is undertaken in automatic tunnel ovens on conveyor belts. The yarn is then finally ready for winding onto bobbins. Rayon was first developed for clothing fabrics, but its qualities soon led to its use in all sorts of household materials and, equally importantly in Preston, for use as tyre cord in the manufacture of motor vehicle tyres.
One Saturday evening I was bored at home and thought, I'll go and see how they're getting on with the demolition. So I went along the back of the fence um, and was looking in. There was a hole in the fence. Everything was quiet. Now I knew the plant very well, so I had to wander in to see what it was. What I found was there was an electrical cabinet in there full of old relays which they were just going to scrap. Now a friend of mine was interested in getting some of these, so Monday morning we rang up the scrap company dealing with it and said, we've seen this cabinet, can we make you an offer for it? So then we got access in legally and uh, went in and took cameras with us. But you also found a treasure trove, a bit like a Viking hoard, a bit like the Cuerdale hoard. Yeah. Because just... those, those are the photos which are on Flickr now in the mm -hmm. present digital archive. Where did you find them? It was a bit of luck as we were on site. They were clearing out the old dark room, the company dark room, and just skipping everything. Um, so I said to the guy, what's happening to these? They just go in. So I said, well, can I take some? He said, I don't mind. The, thought, the official photograph that I was on at Court Halls was the apprentice Christmas party. Which one are you? Well, one, one, <laughs> I'll show, I'll show. The, you're all away. With one, funny, oh, yes, yeah, we all had sort of... Um, I'm going to put this one in the film. We all, <laughs> by all means. Frank. By all means. Um, well, I think we had false noses, we had glasses, we had all sorts of other things on. But up shot was, we used to go around as apprentices at Christmas and we'd be offering cigarettes or sweets in exchange for money. Yeah, we had to sing Christmas carols. Uh, yeah, as part of the apprenticeship, I spent three months in the drawing office and one of the jobs I was given was to draw out an area for a, a new, um, I think it was a filter being put in. Uh, the old one had corroded away and they were getting a new plastic one built. And so I drew it out and drew where the new one was going to go and then some guys you know, went onto the maintenance team, they installed the thing and then the amazing coincidence was that I was there when they were demolishing the place and the crane was lifting this thing out that I'd done the drawings for. 